Hi, I'm Anthony Marinelli, and I'm here today to show you something that I think every synth needs. And what is that? It's drive. So that word was kind of new to me the first time I heard it, and the first time I heard it was when I was examining Moog instruments, because Bob Moog was a big fan of drive, which is basically a form of harmonic distortion that a lot of times like nice preamps will give you that, Neve preamps will do that, and then there's all kinds of you know preamps that have come out ever since then that you can run your keyboards through, your synthesizers, guitars, even drums, even vocals, and get nice distortion on there. Well, within each keyboard, there's an opportunity to do that as well. So I'd like to show you, starting with the Mini Moog, how to get drive at the instrument before we go into a preamp or into a mixing console or, or something like that. So if you look on the front panel of the Mini Moog, you see three oscillator volume inputs to this mixer section. There's also two other inputs to this mixer section. One of them is the noise volume, and you can choose between white noise and pink noise. But the fifth one, in this case, is the external input volume. So external input volume gives you an opportunity to bring in another sound like maybe a bass guitar or an electric guitar or a vocal, anything outside of the Mini Moog. But what I'm going to do today is take the output of the Mini Moog, and I'll show you how to do it. Right now we're listening to the low output of the main outputs on the Mini Moog. There's also a high output. So I'm going to take this chord, come out of the high output, and go directly into the input of the external signal. And on the front panel it reads external input volume. So listen to the sound. Straightforward, sawtooth into the mixer, into the filter, no initial filter cutoff frequency, a little bit of resonance, lots of envelope generator controlling the filter, and just a simple decay on the sound. So you've heard that kind of sound before. One oscillator. Now, by bringing in the output of the Mini Moog back into the mixer, that's what's going on, this sound that you just heard is going out of the Mini Moog, but then back into the Mini Moog via this external input volume. And you hear what happens. It's starting to distort in a good way. Down low. So I have to find the sweet spot. There it is. So when I say sweet spot, I mean if you go too much, the pitch moves all over the place because you're just frying the input like crazy. You hear all that movement? But if you get it just right, you can play pitches and you get this incredible harmonic distortion. Let's move on to another one. So now let's explore internal distortion or internal drive on the ARP 2600. And the reason is there's a preamplifier built into it. So it's a preamp, just like we're used to taking our external devices, guitars, basses, keyboards, putting them into a preamp before we go into our DAW, um, into our converters. Well, we can do it at the instrument before we go to an external preamp into our converters and into our DAW. So let's start with this, um, a basic patch, VCO3. So I'll just put the patch cords in so you can kind of follow the flow into the mixer so that it's going into the filter because there's a mixer in this filter. And then I'm modulating the filter with this envelope generator. And it's very simple. It's a very simple shape. Just decay time in the envelope generator. We don't even need the release time. And I'm patching it again so there's no confusion. You don't have to patch these because they're normal, but I'm showing you the patch for those of you that are not as familiar with this 
face panel. And then this VCF goes to the VCA, and then this VCA goes to the mixer, and there you go. There's the sound. So, basic sound. Not much to it. Sawtooth that decays through a filter. So, let's make it more interesting. Instead of going straight into the VCA, I'm going to take this filter output and go into that preamp that we talked about, and then go into the VCA. Let's see what happens. I'll bring it down so I can start bringing it up. You hear that? A little bit right there, and a lot right there. With resonance, really starts talking. And when you bring another oscillator in, let's bring in oscillator one, and I'm going to tune it, it's, let's tune it down like an octave and a fifth. So we're there already. So you get that sound. Distorted. I love that sound. So here's the straight signal. I'm going to move this cable over so you can still get the distorted sound in the VCA and I'm going to use the normal which is here. So you can hear just the straight signal. Here's the original one oscillator. Add the octave and a fifth. And then start adding the distortion. So I actually have both. Distorted with straight. Pretty fun. So, one other thing that we can try, because this is an audio signal path, is working with an LFO. What if we distort the LFO waveform before we modulate? So, basic vibrato is an LFO modulating an audio waveform. But what I'm suggesting is that LFO getting distorted before it modulates the audio waveform. So, I'm going to pull this out and show you a patch like that. And it's pretty simple too. And I won't, I'll just go with the normals on this so we can move quickly. But I'm going to take a triangle wave from oscillator 2, put it in low frequency. So I have an LFO that's moving like at the speed of vibrato. And then I'm going to modulate oscillator 3. So let's hear it. Oscillator 3. Volume. Turning it up. You can already see what's happening. I just turned a triangle wave into a square wave by distorting it. That's a square wave. It's staircasing. If I slow it down, we have a triangle wave. And I'll speed it up a little so it's like more like vibrato. Very little distortion. Sounds like a triangle wave. And as I add, as I distort the LFO, it becomes a trill, which is a square wave. So essentially what's happening with distortion is you start to chop off the top of the waveform. So it flattens it out. So instead of it being nice and smooth, it just becomes staircased. So you can also distort LFOs and low frequency sounds and create hybrid waveforms because as I was turning the knob I was getting a very smooth triangle wave and sort of in between a very choppy square wave. So you get sort of this hybrid waveform. So it's fun. Create your own waveforms using distortion. So now back to the Mini Moog. I thought it would be interesting to bring in an external device 
especially one that was designed by Bob Moog, and show you how much of a fan he was of drive. If you look at the top of this Moger Foger pedal, it's an MF-104M, which is an analog delay pedal, which is quite an amazing sounding delay pedal. But it, at the very top middle, there's a drive knob. So it's designed right there to distort the input of this pedal way before you're ever going to get to the preamp um, that's going into your um, converters and into your DAW. So I'll let you hear what this sounds like. And I'm bypassing the pedal. I'm not hearing the effect of the analog delay in the slightest. It's just the input um, signal section of this pedal. So rectangle wave, which is slightly off from a square wave. There's a square wave. It's a little bit skinnier than a square wave, not as skinny as a really skinny pulse. It's kind of in the middle between a skinny pulse and a sawtooth wave. Going into the mixer um, right here, let's turn all these off. Oscillator one at full level, filter cutoff frequency zero, emphasis, which is resonance zero, about halfway on the contour, and it's just a simple decay time. And the um, sustain time is up in the VCA. So it's just passing basically a decaying filter with a rectangle wave. Okay, great. Now let's turn up the drive. Whoa, I hit a point where I get a nice distortion and then it goes back to normal. And right in here, get a little quack. Very subtle movements. Gotta love that. And I barely move the drive. So if I start really driving it up there, Again, more of a steady state harmonic distortion. Even more now. I think it's getting to the point, ooh, it's really thinning out. And you can hear that clip, that little great sound. Pulling it down, so you can hear the transition to less harmonic distortion. at the cusp of breakup and you can see the levels back down to green this light is indicating our level so we pretty much yellow green all the way up to the red zone these drive circuits are amazing so Bob Moog you know you think of like these wonderful expensive instruments that they're gonna be clean but they're nasty and they they can clip and they come out the level comes out really hot so let's try putting some resonance into the sound. And we'll hear what the distortion sounds like on a resonant square wave. Getting started. It's talking. Let's increase the decay time. Really ripping, increasing the resonance a little. Back off the resonance a little. So the resonance is kind of relating to the distortion because resonance is a type of feedback in the filter. And now I'm turning the, the drive down. There's just so many great colors in here. And I haven't even used the delay circuit in the slightest. And that's still a little bit of color there. And just for fun, let's kick in the delay. Increase the delay time. different color with the circuit in, engaged. Just ripping distortion.
some of my favorite sounds. So, no synth should be without a good drive circuit. Let's try some more things. I thought it would be interesting to introduce um, a classic boss pedal and see what kind of drive we can get out of that, running the Mini Moog directly into the input of this pedal. It's the Heavy Metal HM2 pedal, and these pedals can be gotten uh, used for not much money. If you get a, an older vintage one, um, you'll pay a little bit more, and the circuits sound pretty close. You know, I always just get the vintage ones just in case, but there's a lot of um, valuable sound color that can be gotten out of these pedals, and you don't have to spend too much money. So here we go. Uh, what do we have? Same waveform, the rectangle wave going into the filter. Uh, let's do no resonance first, not too much modulation, and just a decay time. Actually, let's try some sustain level um, in the filter, and we'll hear what it sounds like. Paddles on. Bring up the volume. Bass treble. Let's bring up some filter resonance. Sweeping the resonance. That brings in a lot of really good harmonic distortion. Let's bring some lows in. No, I'm really liking it. More resonance. A little less resonance. talks to you when you turn the filter contour. That's why I have the sustain level up so that the filter contour is pretty much acting the way the initial filter frequency would work. Now I can take out the lows with the pedal and I can take out the highs and add the lows back which is kind of cool. Very clipped sound. Bring those highs back. And I have full distortion. We could go with less distortion. How about modulating the filter with a sine wave? Let's try another boss pedal. I have a boss hyperfuzz. It's an FZ2. So I'm running same rectangle wave into the mixer, no filter cutoff frequency, some resonance this time, just straight decay, no sustain in the filter, sustain in the VCA, and a little bit of filter contour. Let's hear what it sounds like with very little gain. So you're getting some distortion, but now let me crank up the gain. Make it brighter. Crank up the bass. Now that's fuzz two. There's fuzz one, which is voiced a little differently. It sounds more like a guitar. Here's the difference. Fuzz two, fuzz one. So I guess fuzz two is a little more like 60s. 
So that transistor radio, like a big muff. Buzz one. More mids. Let me bring in another oscillator. Bring the highs back up. Get it into audio. And now, one of my favorite pedals, the first pedal that I ever owned, the Mutron 3, well, it's the second pedal I've ever owned. First pedal I ever owned was the Maestro Phase Shifter, and then the Mutron 3 that's sitting right here. Um, it's an envelope follower, but it has a gain knob, and it does some really nice distortion because I used to pump my portable organs through there and distort them to keep up with the guitar players. So let's hear the same mini Moog patch with the rectangle wave into the filter. Filter looks like we've got it sitting at halfway. I'll, I'll shut it down and, and sweep it. We've got full contour um, with decay time and no filter resonance. Okay, kind of like a square tuba. There's some nice distortion. Let's put some resonance. Let's get the sustained voltage up. Nice stuff. So that's a point where it ducks back down to the pure tone. That's right on the edge, so you can kind of make it crackle. Right there, you get a second harmonic in there. And I'll just give you full distortion. See how thin it got? A little thicker. It's kind of like sweeping a pulse wave. Sounds like pulse width mod. Very much so. Let's hear it low. Killer. Now, I can also change, I'm hearing a high pass filter. Let's go to a low pass filter. Try some resonance here. Nice. High pass filter. All right, let's kick this in. These are just different positions, so we can have the range sweep up or sweep down, and we can and the range of a high pass filter, a band pass filter, or a low pass filter, and then the drive can sweep up or down too. Sometimes it's fun to just turn knobs. Ornamento down. There's that pulse with mod again. High pass. Amazing. So the Mutron 3. So a lot of times you'll find an envelope follower or something like this has a gain circuit or you know an input level or something like that. So experiment because that's how I came across this. And uh, it's making tones that the other pedals don't really make because you can change the filter type and then you can change the shape. 
the range, you know, so it's more effective in the high range or the low range, and then you can drive it up or down based on the envelope that you're feeding it. So let's try another one. This is too much fun. Okay, we have a, right now we have a mini Moog going through a Fender Showman amplifier, and we have Ben at the controls of the Showman amp. So. He's behind our sound on all our videos, and Thank you. much appreciation to Ben. So he's also great on the knobs, and this amp sounds really good. It's very different than the pedals. It just seems a lot smoother and pretty satisfying to me. So we're gonna play around with the drive, you know, one more, one more go around on the Mini Moog. Uh, the drive on the amplifier. So remember, every synth needs this. How about if we try a pedal that costs under $40? Dante gave me this for my birthday. Joyo American Sound Pedal. And it's a simulation of a Fender Deluxe amplifier, as far as I know. But it's a very effective pedal, and I'll show you some of the things that it can do. But let's talk about what's going into it. Same waveform that we used on the, on the previous example. It's in between a square wave and a very skinny pulse wave. So it's like a rectangle wave, full volume, no cutoff frequency, no resonance, about halfway on the filter contour and just decay tile. So now we can bring up the drive. Let's see what happens. So there's some, there's some good harmonic distortion compared to none. But where it gets interesting is you can voice the speaker. Like frying your speaker cones. And then you can also bring in high frequencies. mid frequencies and low frequencies a little less drive on that one now no lows 
So different combinations. I like a lot of highs, I like a lot of drive. Not too much speaker craziness. Try some resonance on the same knob turns. So that's the American Sound pedal by Joyo, under $40, a lot of good color there. I think we could give it a try um, now maybe on a plug-in and see what happens. Please remember to like and subscribe. I love my crew, I want to keep it together, and it really helps us along. I think we should try a plug-in. We have it pulled up on this laptop right now, and it's, it's an Arturia Mini Moog, and it's a Moger Foger. MF104S, which is the latest version of uh, the Moger Foger plugin that's made by Moog. And we just downloaded it. So we're running the Mini Moog through this plugin, and it's going to be interesting to see like how the drive sounds on this plugin. So the synth sound is the same kind of sound. It's a rectangle wave into the mixer, the filter's shut down. There's very little resonance. There's no resonance, actually. I have uh, filters open with the contour at the slow rate of the decay time, which is not very, um, not very slow actually. It's like less than about, about a second. And then there's some sustain level, so I'll, I'll shut that down so we can hear it. Okay, so now it's time to bring up the drive. I haven't heard anything yet. Seems to be getting brighter. So that's full. A little bit of distortion there, but it's kind of lacking all that nuance where you know you turn it and then it starts to sizzle and then it kind of hits a cliff where you go on one side of that cliff and it's kind of straight sounding, and then you go on the other side and it's starting to like sizzle and then you push it a little bit more and then it really starts distorting and then you go up another notch and you get some extra like third order harmonics and then you crank it all the way and it just buzz saws. So I'm not really getting much. Let me bring up the sustain level and give this guy one more chance. Okay, no drive. Let's bring it up. Seems to be just getting brighter. Maybe it's affecting the delay more. So I'm going to bring up this mix knob, which is going to give us more of the delayed signal. So what I'm thinking is it might just be distorting the effect more than the input signal. Whereas the original pedal affects both. So let's try it. Okay. So that 
effect is a little bit distorted. Listen to it compared to less drive. Cleaner, even less drive. Really clean. So let's go to more drive. So it's starting to compress the signal and chop off the top a little bit. And then the maximum drive on the effect. So it's super compressed. But we've lost the high end. So there's an extreme amount of high end on the straight signal, but almost no high end sizzle on the effect. Well, it might be worth giving it more of a chance, but based on our quick test today, I think this $40 Joya pedal um, might do the job and give you some more interesting colors. The plugin is going to be able to sync to time better. I mean, completely sync to time because you have a delay going on there. But in terms of the distortion, I think you're going to get more colors having the EQ on here and the filter voicing and then this drive knob gives you a lot of range and you can sort of find that cliff on these analog devices. All the analog devices seem to do that. So we'll explore more digital like VSTs plugins in the future and see if we can find one that, that kind of distorts like an analog one. But that's our findings for today. I think we've, we've run the gamut of, you know, old pedals, newer pedals, boss pedals, a real amplifier, and a plug-in. And it's the same um, style pedal as the analog one that we use, which is, the, we use the Mografoger MF-104M. This is the Mografoger MF-104S. So I still think having the option to run your synths through drive pedals gives you uh, an infinite addition of, of sound capabilities that are going to be musically pleasing and probably the best thing about it is really expressive because when you need that extra quality to the sound like where it really just sort of screams and cuts through the track that's when I reach for the drive knob and every synth needs it. See you next time. Really?